Hi everybody and welcome back to Sandy Injunction. You can see I got dressed up for this video, do apologise about that, but let's see what's been going on with the Folkestone Harbour build. Okay, everybody, welcome back to Sand Injunction. As I said at the start, apologies for the way I'm dressed. I've been doing a lot of dirty work over there and I really didn't stop to think about this. I just wanted to bring you up to speed with what's been going on with folks in Harbour and the build. Now, the thing is that uh, there is a lot of problems that I've had and they will be revealed during the course of this video. On top of that, I've had a little bit of fun towards the end. So if you watch the end uh, or towards the end, you'll see how I sort of mocked up my visualizations for how the harbour may appear at some point in the future once it's all done. Long way from that, but I just wanted to give you some idea of how it would function as a harbour and how the different industries will work and the container traffic and the, well not container, it's not coming that far forward, but certainly with the passenger traffic, the continental uh, boat train traffic, all of that sort of stuff. I think I've worked it all out. So take a look at that. And it's just a little bit of fun, a little bit of a mock-up that I put together and give you some ideas. So with that all said and done, uh, there will be, of course, a lot of videos in the future based on this. And the scenics on this will not start until the track is down, fully tested and operational. Thank you, before I go any further, thank you for all my subscribers. All of those that have been on for a while and support the channel and all the new ones. Thank you very, very much. And if you're not subscribing then and you like the content that I put out, then please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything to do that, but you really do help the channel grow. And you do make it so that more people get to see the content that, that you're enjoying. So maybe you consider just pressing that subscribe button and giving it a thumbs up and a bell icon and all those things and comment by all means i love to answer all of those so now i am rambling so let's crack on let's get on with this video and uh, stay safe everybody happy modeling i'll catch each and every one of you in the next video take care bye bye hi everybody and welcome back now uh, i wanted to show what i've been up to so far continuing on from the last video and here you'll see that I've been doing all the curvature coming round down as it comes into the entrance of the Folkestone Harbour station. Now I had a lot of problems with this. The, this is the second attempt. I think I may have said that in the last video. And I had all the angles I thought set up, but they were a little bit off. They were, in fact, they were quite way off. I did have them set here was over five degrees leveling down to about 4.4 and then coming down to about 1.8 so it realized that this half was too, way too steep and the problem lay there so I dropped all that down now I've got something a little more even I've got about 2.67 here and down to about 2.12 and then here it comes down to about 2.7 2.8 and that's probably, I keep playing with this, and I probably think that's as far as I could get. Now, when it was at the real bad stage, I, the low car I'm going to send up now could only haul two carriages. Now it can haul three, albeit it starts to slide about there. I put a class 24 up and a class 33, and even a small P class, SENCR P class that I've got, that P class could pull um what was it five or six wagons up behind it so that was really quite astonishing actually powerful little motor so i'm going to send this one up now and hopefully it it will become quite obvious that it will slip as it comes around you can push the power up a little bit around here and you can see it's still climbing and of course there is no power base now that if that can make it like that, then um, I've got to say that I shouldn't have any too many problems because there will be no more than three coaches being pulled up or down this line anyway. The lines that are now intersecting this, in a sense, 
I've got the cork down, I've cut the pieces of track and that's all setting up now. So I've got still the track to put in, but at least the cork is down. It's a little bit of a dog leggy bit there, which I hope, uh, I've been running sort of things over it and I think it will work. If not, I'll have to take the piece of track up and try and make something there. It's just it's a very short piece of track and it's trying to bridge a very awkward angle. We'll see. I hope it'll be fine. Now the thing is that I suddenly realised that there's yet another problem. This was going to come into a little tunnel, out of a little tunnel. But I've realised that there, at that point there to there, nothing can get by. I can get a box fan, just clears it. A wagon, yes, but a coach, no, and probably no loco will go under there. So what I've had or will have to do is just cut that back there as carefully as I can in a curve. And then I will build a brick retaining wall to that point there. And then I can come into whatever I'm going to be doing here. I'm struggling here with heights. Look at this. This height here is so low to this. I can take this piece off. And that will give me another half an inch. But the heights are so, so low that I really do not think that I'm going to have any representation of arches. It's a real crying shame because at the end of the day, the harbour and the harbour arches are really what makes Folkestone as well as this section here. This is what makes Folkestone. Um, but I've sort of done all this. I've taken it back up again and I have cut into that curvature there's still plenty of room for the track coming round it's at a sensible grade there is now enough room as you can see here to put a solid side off of there down to the ground now what I'm planning to do if I can make it happen is this was the other side in coming off of a uh, hive I might take that down around the back a little way as far as I can take it and have the road that comes off of the harbour here and out from under there and going off into a tunnel somewhere here coming round through and it might well just hook up and pretend that there's something through there because what I want to do is I'm going to start the arches and I'm going to hang up they're not going to be huge deep viaduct arches but they're going to be arches nonetheless and they're going to come down here and they're going to decrease in size The reason I've got three coaches on the back of the steamer is that I can run a full set or three coaches and a locomotive into about there and that would be the coaches on the station and that would be it. Now the this is uh, an old class 33 called Eastley that I have. This has no problem at all. It's got a great deal of traction. It's got a lot of power. And it's got the same load on the back and it will creep up there steadily, it will not slip. Now of course there are no um, plates underneath this. There you go, now I can hear. Okay, what I've got here is something that I would love to see in a modern RTR. Uh, from Hornby or Backman, but none of them seem to be able or have it in their plans to do. This is an old, I'm not sure if it's Sterling or what, but it's an R1. And they had two or three of these at Folkestone Harbour for many, many years until um, I think it was the late 50s when they swapped them out for some GWR pannier tanks. And the local drivers and what have you hated those. So they only lasted about a year before they found themselves back on the uh, western areas of the southern lines. But uh, these uh, locomotives, the R1, were sort of the workhorses for many, many tens of years on the Folkestone Harbour line. And you, they were often banked with one on the back, two on the front, up the steep grade. I'd love to be able to do that. Now, my skills are poor, and I do know that uh, Southeast Finecast do a R1 or an R1 model. 
But once I'd worked out the cost of the model, the cost of the, the engine set or the motor set and cogs to go with it, plus the wheel set, upgrading the wheel set, I found that, that each one was going to cost me well over £200. And that's before I even started welding it up. Not that I'm capable of welding it up. So I just went out and I bought an old Ren one, which was in good condition. I'm going to see if I can run this on DCC. Now it's noisy. That's the only thing. Whether or not I can change the motor on it, I don't know, because I'm guessing it's an old three pole motor. And with that regard, I don't know how it would work with a more modern motor. That's if I can get one to go in. But there are plenty of you out there that I'm sure know how to do it and say, yes, it's very possible. But that might make it quieter. What I'm surprised to know is the fact that the older wheels on this are running over code 75 without a banging around. Really impressive. So I'm going to see now if this little loco can pull three carriages on its own up the grade. Let's have a go. Oh. I'm trying the wrong one would be good. The right loco, there we go. Okay, let's give this a go. You can't argue with that too well, can you? They're a little old wren locomotive heck knows how many years old that really is uh, with an old motor and it sort of although it wasn't perfect it went up there very very well very easily i've just been playing around i've decided got all the levels about where i wanted to i've just cut out some arches and downloaded a uh, an arch set up from scale scenes and just printed a few off and glued them to bits of card just to give me a little bit of fun and to see how it might look so this would be the representative of the ford road arches although the ones at ford road are huge uh way off the ground these are just going to be a token and behind it you can see that i have kept that little bit of rail through there so that vehicles can come round here under the arches, load, unload, do whatever they want to do. Uh, let's carry on. Uh, coming round, you'll notice that this is my little Achilles heel. This is my branch line, and it is an extremely tight. It's just under 24 inches. Uh, it's a tight curve. There's not a lot I can do about it. I've got it as closely spaced as I can to allow coaches to get past each other, and I've had to take the old piece of board out that was here and put in a new piece cut to shape i am going to trim this down a little bit because i still need to lean over to get to stuff behind there but it it will still have plenty of room here just to finish off the scenics and so that will be that and it will come round and into this uh, y and then continue on down here where it will join the rest of the folks in harbour now, what I've also done is I've cut bits of paper uh, to give me an idea of the roads. I've taken a lot. Let me just come up here and I can show you what's been going on here. All the structures that I had in here uh, have gone and I've cleaned this area out completely and I've cut through here and I've made this all open plan. The reason being that uh, I did not have enough for that and that to allow traffic underneath so what we're going to do and it's actually a fact that under the arches the road is lower and it does come up to meet this road here quite steeply so it's quite believable that i take the road down under and back up into there when it's all done when it's all finished you're not going to notice it too much if i disguise things and do things in a certain way but i wanted to make the arches come down we're going to have one, possibly two arches here, then the swing bridge. Completely out of scale uh, in terms of the bridge and the arches. There should be nine arches there. We can get two in at best and then have half of it as a swing bridge. The swing bridge is not going to be operational. It's going to be as a swing bridge and it's going to be fixed. Move one of these little 
cameo pieces to that point there you can see what two might look like into the inner and outer harbour areas with the swing bridge going in there. The road that comes from the harbour over the tracks and around this area, because of the gap that I've got here, is too narrow to have two-way road. So this will be signal lights, signal lights, and it will um, allow traffic to go one way only into there. Now, in, in reality, this is way off over this way and there are roads going all the way around here. So traffic will come round here and do all sorts of other things. But on my layout, they can only come to the harbour, do their business and disappear. That's why I can get away with just having single lane traffic through that area there on the edge. But it's a compromise and it's always a compromise. But I think... We've got the levels correct. We've got everything going for it. We're going to be cutting that down. And I've got to say some good news is, uh, you know, my good friend James um, from uh, Bexhill West, he has decided in, I don't know, he's crazy, <laughs> but he's really going to get on board with this with me. He's going to help me uh, construct this area and make it look good. Um, and I, I think it's jolly sweet of him, jolly kind of him. And, um, you know, there's not going to be a rush on this. It's when he gets time. He's a very busy guy. But uh, I do hope that um, this will just be so great at the end of it. This board here is half inch. And it goes half inch to just there somewhere. This will remain half inch too. But this is going to have a lot more scenics coming from there. So it will be heavier wood for it. This, however... This will be reduced in the depth of the wood. It will be fully supported and it'll probably be quarter inch ply, but it will be totally supported underneath. So it's not going to warp, not going to do anything as it shouldn't do. But that gives me a little bit more height through here for this road. So the road can maybe come up a little bit and sort of shallow out that dip so it doesn't go so far down. But I'm really pleased with the way it's looking. And I just want to end with a little bit of running up and down just to show you that the trains will go up and down. And a runaway. <laughs> there you go. Can't beat it. Gotta say. I had two long points and a crossover. I'd done all the cabling, all the sort of wires and done everything that needed in preparation. In fact, you can see just here, there are two pieces of separate track waiting to be laid. Anyway, the problem here is that most of the connections to the crossover are the Pico insulated uh, joiners. They are awful. I mean, they're necessary, but they're absolutely awful when you've got if you've got one or two, not a problem. But when you've got almost all of these four 
connecting off this uh, crossover is unbelievably crazy trying to get them lined up. I was at it over half an hour and I ended up snapping one of the frog uh, wires off of here and then I got that repaired or at least I think I've got it repaired and then I tried again for another 10-15 minutes and then I broke another one off the other side there, one off of there and the one off of one of these. It was an absolute nightmare. This was about nine o'clock last night and I just said enough's enough. Tried to solder them back in but I think I've done more damage than anything else. And one of the plastic rail guides on here is a little rough and a little deep displaced. So I don't think I actually want to get all this work done and trust that crossover. So I am going to order another one in here. I hate wasting money, but there you go. It's such as life and it happens. So, so with that said, now for this real nightmare. And you can see here where I have try to repair these two that got snapped off and again there is an absolute nightmare of melting plastic and trying to get that i don't have a fine enough tip and the heat around it just dissipates and into the plastic and melts it off anyway and i think i've got the same problem down here with this end as well as you can see the only one that remains intact is this one here but the one on this side just there is butchered equally um, look these will be correctly made these are just mock-ups everything you're going to see now is just a mock-up and hopefully you'll understand that it will go well now the thing here I wanted to get a lot of depth under there and I have about two inches or so and in actual fact I actually have a photograph and I will insert it just off of camera somewhere so you can see what I mean that the actual arches here, which are on the land side of the harbour here, these are only six foot six uh, to the height for vehicles passing underneath. So they will not accept lorries at all. And uh, in the day, I guess it was horse and cart, things like that. And a few of the old Foden lorries that weren't too high. But um, yes, yeah, so I can actually get away with just over an inch of drop underneath and get that ar those arches in there quite nicely. And it won't be such a scoop under there. So I'm really pleased about that. And you can see from the photographs how shallow those arches really are at that point. And then they open up again down through to the harbour and the swing bridge. But coming across into the harbour now. And I have just been playing around and mocking up somewhere that this might look in the future. So coming down through, you've got two... Um, uh, two lines coming in sorry to the platforms this is the main harbour station it's got a curve to it and a reverse curve out and it will take a four set or three coaches and a loco but from there on in they have to be split uh, to get to their proper destinations this is the entrance coming from a wide down to a single line into the harbour there is a double slip here and that will push stuff across there and wherever I need it to be. And so that will work very nicely. And um, that will then go on off to the harbour arm. Which... Okay, so up on where the lighthouse is going to be, there is a higher wall that runs all the way down this side of the harbour. And that will have an um, area where people can come across from the station back up here to that and then come around, walk around to the uh, viewing points and the lighthouse and all the area up here there were multiple tracks here but we're only having the two coming up to a head here there will be a platform for passengers getting onto the cruise vessels which will dock here and the locomotives well that's something i've been thinking about up on the top here is a crossover so locomotives can cross onto one or the other of the inlines and outlines here and then it can come up and the locomotive can, locomotive can detach, run up, run around whichever line is vacant back up to the top and reconnect to the train to take it back out. So hopefully that gets that area of run round sorted out nicely and we will be able to put two coaches on here to the platform and there will be a platform you know from here to here so 
people can kind of light off and they can get across safely to this seaward side. There was no birthing along here to my knowledge and on occasions there was birthing along here when the weather was good. The weather prevailed from this way and so this is the shelter of the harbour and this is had an extra um, docking station so again I can put the little piece out there is a little uh, jetty that comes off of the harbour there there is another footbridge across from station to this higher area so I'll make sure that is represented somehow and hopefully that will work and um, people can come on and off ferries from this side off of the main station and that will sort that one out and here this was this has been a lot of fun to try and work all of this out I'm just gonna try and put you around so we've got wagons uh, we've got coaches coming into this end but here I've got road access no platforms any of this area it's all going to be like concrete or level to the line so we can have stuff traveling across the line here as you as I've sort of suggested this will be road access all the way down to the front of the harbor and along and out of the harbor and away so you can see coaches coming down to meet some passengers you've got a couple of lorries coming in and they can come across into here and into here so we can have unloading through all of this um, and that will be fine and it does mean to say that I don't need to try and get coaches down to here because the coaches will come literally down to this area here hopefully that'll be okay I fingers crossed so as you can see stuff can come in it can come back up to there and it can travel back down through here into any one of these areas that up there is going to be as large a good shed as I can um, and it will be fed by lines either side of it and that will be good too on the other side here there will be a line that will take a small rake of wagons but I am hoping I can sort of show that industry wise as fish unloading and loading uh, it's closer to the outer harbour so vessels can come in fishing boats could have come in come docked off unloaded all their catch as well as up on the shoreline over there they can do the same and then it can be driven away and off to market there will be other areas here for locos uh, and wagon sidings and storage and as i say there are two two roads for unloading each side of the open planned uh, good shed and that will be loaded and unloaded from the road uh, represented by that old lorry down on the front there I'll come a little closer and show you that in a moment on this side there will be a goods uh, road coming down between the engine shed and the platform that will access uh, dry goods and other stuff that will not sort of cause problems to any passengers on the platform but there will be a division in the platform in a sense and some goods can be loaded unloaded there and taken immediately away on the road at the front and then you've got a two road engine shed which will take care of several little shunters that will be housed in there and uh, they can come in and out and do their jobs and uh, they will be doing all the dock stuff and then just more sidings over here but everything can get to everything else and the problem I had really was getting three coaches from over there down along here and it meant a lot of shunting a lot of moving around and I considered that for a, a good while uh, along also with Paul and decided that you know we could only do it we can only get this fitted in a certain way and it meant that we could only get two coaches and a shunting um, engine just to bring them into position but i figure that i'm going to keep that all as industry and i'm going to have my coaches just literally as i said just now coming around here so we can actually bring three coaches in to this point and passengers can alight through the first two and and that's no different to many modern uh train formations certainly down in the southeast where some of the old platforms and stations have only got room for four uh, coaches and of course you have to doesn't matter which coach you're in if you're not in the first four you go on to somewhere else and you don't get off 
So you have to make your way through the coaches to the front four. In this case, it's uh, three coaches coming down or a four set, and you can alight through the uh, first two coaches or the last two, depending on, on how you look at it. So this will be a road. There's the coaches. That will take care of the Continental boat train traffic. And then this will be here. Now, along here, what will happen is that people's cars will be delivered by... Uh, by workers so somebody comes into a car park over here somewhere gets to go on the boat train and um, they will they will come around here and or the car will be brought around if it's going to go onto a car ferry because that's how it was the crane will be lifting these on as they used to be done and lifted onto the vessel and so that's how that will work Okay, so now here's a slightly closer look at what's going on down here. So we've got a front road along the top of the harbour and there's the outer harbour and the inner harbour there. And you've got a road that come around there, a couple of shares and stuff on the side here um, for whatever. I need to put a way station in somewhere, uh, obviously for vehicles loading and unloading uh, minerals and other sorts of stuff. So... I'm not sure where that will go yet, but we'll make that happen somewhere. But you can see that we've got plenty of wagon storage. We've got plenty of room to house, do some maintenance in the back of the engine shed. So it's a longer one, but it only need to have a certain amount of that with tracking or, or whatever. So we can put pits in, whatever we need to do to make that all functional and make it look good. Uh, but everything can get over everywhere else. I actually did away with a double slip here somewhere, which saved me some money, but I actually then ended up putting another three ways. So we've got one, two, three, three ways asymmetrics going into this new system, and it's provided a little bit more functionality on this side. When I first looked at what we did through here, uh, there was an awful lot of wasted area over here and I felt that that looked a bit silly. So I have put the three-way in. It means that I can bring more carriages up through the back there and a little storage siding here which will be for more unloading and I need it through there. So there's lots of potential for loading, unloading, different industries from coal to dry goods to vehicle traffic, um, imports, exports in the early days, um, people, everything. I hopefully will get all this. And of course, the, one of the main industries of Folkestone would have been fish, the fish markets, um, because this is called, uh, the road under there is Fish Market Road. And uh, that gives access to all this um, area of the harbour area there. And then I can build the hill up here and make it sort of go into the area up the top there but make it sort of nothing but into trees or into buildings whatever now you might be asking why is there a big uh, lack of buildings the back in the day of course there were some beautiful buildings uh, back in SCNCR days and early southern days there was the customs houses there were all sorts of things down there on the harbour well the size and what they would look like, if to make them look anything, it would take so much of the room up at that point. That's one thing. And secondly, the beautiful SENCR customs house was bombed to smithereens during the Second World War. And after that end, it became so much more commercial. Um, sort of early BR and onwards, uh, sort of late southern, early BR, um, was really it meant that it was a lot more uh, carriage sidings a lot more industry bigger goods shed was put in so that's where i pitched this at because i don't think i can put all the beautiful buildings in that i would like to a lot of scratch building i'm not sure if my skills are up to that but i didn't want to lose all the um, functionality of the layout at that point i can't there were so many changes to the harbour over the years from its beginnings all the way through, uh, not only on the swing bridge and the arches, but the harbour area itself uh, went through some major changes. It was extended, I think, twice and uh, from its first and things like this run out. 
carriage sidings down through along the beach. Loads of big, big changes. And so I can't rep represent all of that. And I've got to pitch it somewhere. And I think the sort of late SR, early BR will be where it's going to look, even though I will be bringing in an awful lot of early pre-grouping at different times. But there you go. That's it. That's my railroad my railway and so that's the decision I've made but hopefully we will now be able to crack on especially when I get replacement points over there and get that sorted out all the best for now I hope you've enjoyed this I'm sorry that uh, it's constantly about the harbour build but it is occupying pretty much everything that I am doing it's got to be said and so a lot of my videos will be about this over the coming months hey everybody Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with it. All the best to you. Happy modeling. Stay safe, everybody. Catch you all very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.